complete instructions for learning to operate the change disc or bias embroidery machine. The video you are about to view is designed to teach you exactly the same thing you would learn about chain stitch or bonnet embroidery if you came to St. Louis and spent a week in actual hands-on training at the Artistic Touch School of Embroidery. I've known how to operate the bonnet machines for over 40 years. Of course, I have forgotten what it's like to be a beginner. I've taught many people how to operate the machines but I know setting down at the machine the first time can be a frightening experience. Of course, I can show you how to do it, but since watching a professional do things makes it look like there's nothing to it, are you going to be able to learn by just watching me? I think you'll like my solution to this problem. We have a student tonight. Her name is Leah. And she's not had any more experience than you have. She's read the transcript and the free information kit, which you should have also read by now. I've not allowed Leah to set down at the machine. She's seen me write her name on the machine, and that is all. We're going to introduce you to Leah now, and I'll ask her some questions. Leah, have you ever uh, done embroidery work on the machine before? No. Have you ever seen work done on the machine? No, not until last night. And what did we do last night? She just did my name. Yeah. Do you know how to operate a sewing machine? Yeah. A regular home machine? Yeah. Yeah. You've never worked in a factory, though? No. <laughs> uh, do you know how to, uh, what kind of artist are you? None. None. Okay. Do you, uh, when you're talking on the telephone and stuff like that, do you doodle? Yeah. Yeah. Do you know how to uh, do, if you saw a picture and you wanted to trace that picture, would, could you do that? Yeah. Well, that's all that you really need to know in order to become a really great embroidery artist. You're, it's not required that you be a third uh, year art student. You don't have to have a lot of art training. All you really need is to be able to look at something and be able to say this looks good and that don't look good. So we'll continue on. The video that we're going to do is going to be done in three evenings. This will give you and Leah time to practice what you've learned between the shootings. I'll let you know when we make each break. The following day, Leah's going to practice and you should do the same thing. If you do the way I've described, you and Leah will both be able to operate the machine when you get to the end of this tape. The most time consuming part of learning to operate the machine is the time you have to spend practicing. This you can do at home on your own machine. My name's Ruth Franklin, and I hope you'll feel like I have taken you by the hand and led you through these lessons step by step. When you contacted me for information about my books and videotapes, you were sent a free information kit. I hope you took the time to read it because I'm not going to go into things like the history of the machine and how to sell your work and who to sell it to. That's all covered in the information kit. If you didn't receive one, get in touch with me, let me know, and one will be sent right out to you. The first thing I'll do on the video is have you and Leah check the machine to see if it's in proper working condition. You could be trying to work to learn on a machine that has a broken needle. The looper could be out of alignment or there could even be a part missing and you wouldn't know. All you would know is the machine don't work, but you wouldn't know why. So unless the machine is in proper working condition, you won't be able to learn. Along with the free, with the transcript will be 
a page in the transcript that has pictures of the parts that are to be taken off for regular maintenance. In addition, there will also be a page that shows you the machine. It has the parts marked on it and the important things that you need to know are also marked on there. It shows you where the nipple of the machine is, where the needle is, where the foot is, where the wheel is, where the handle, and all of that. So as I tell you names of parts on the machine, you can refer to these two pages to see what I'm talking about. As you check the machine to see if it's working right, we're going to remove some of the parts. These are the parts that were pictured that I just showed you. These have to be removed regularly, almost weekly, for cleaning and oiling. Next, we will clean and oil the machine and make sure that everything is working right and put it back together. Then comes what I consider to be the most important part of your training. You and Leah will be shown how to make all of the necessary adjustments on the machine. Knowing how to make these adjustments will mean the difference between your learning to be a really good operator, able to do quality work, or just being a mediocre operator that can only write names and do simple designs. If you don't learn how to make the adjustments, you'll always have problems with the machine picking the materials, dropping stitches, puckering and many other things. You'll also have problems following the designs and making square corners on your block lettering. If you do learn to make all of the adjustments, you will be able to solve any problem that you may come up with. Don't think that you can skip over learning this and just call a mechanic when the machine needs to be adjusted. Mechanics that know anything about these machines are few and far between. And even if you do find one, you still won't be able to do the fine adjustments because you have to adjust this machine to you in order to do good work. There are operators who have been in the business for many years that have never learned to do some of these adjustments. Believe me, you can see it in the work that they do. I promise in this video I'll teach you much more than just how to write your name. I plan on teaching you to be an embroidery artist. I made a special effort to be sure all of the information I give you is accurate information. I don't want you calling me and telling me that your machine was damaged because I forgot to tell you something. I also don't want to leave you stranded because I started showing you something and then went on to something else without finishing. I'm sure you'll notice during this narration it sounds like I'm reading. That's because I am. The reason for that is because I want to get it right. During the entire narration I will be reading because we're working from a script. Just before there's something very, very special about this video. Just before we do each step, on the screen a number will appear. That number will correspond with the number for that particular step in this transcript. If you want to review any particular step, you can fast forward or rewind until the number appears. As I told you before, the video will be done in three phases in order to give you and Leah time to practice what you've learned. In this first section, in addition to the things I've already told you, I will show you how to align yourself with the machine when you sit down. You are an extension of the machine, so this is very important. Next, I'll have Leah place two pieces of typing paper under the foot. Put the foot down and start getting used to operating the foot and the handle. I'll explain what the machine is supposed to do and how it does it. I'll also explain the relationship between the nose and the handle and how they work. From time to time, Leah 
and probably even Clay, the cameraman, will ask me questions. It's okay, Clay. I think you'll find this beneficial. But they'll probably be asking the same questions you would ask if you were here. If they miss anything you would like to ask, write it down and call me. Leah will practice to begin with, trying to stay on the paper. Maybe she'll even try to write her name. I don't know. We'll see. Enough talk. Let's Okay, Leah is sitting at the machine, the first time that she's gotten this close to it. To start off with, in order to do what I'm going to have you do for the next few minutes, you're going to need some tools to do it with. Leah, on the right side of the machine is a box that has a bunch of tools in it. Look in the box and get out the two pairs of pliers that are in there. You don't really need two pairs, but if you have the two different kinds, it does help. Then, in addition to that, there should be a couple different kinds of screwdrivers. Left. You've got one large one and one small one. Then, there is also what we call the foot knife. That's the thing in there that has a little hook on it. Right. Okay. Uh, we also have a pair of thread nippers that we'll use later on in order to cut the thread whenever we stop. We have a can of oil, and we have what is called a clean-out rod that is used to clean out the needle shaft. There's also a little small wrench in there. I need Leah to put it over to the other the little wrench is called the nipple wrench. This is, these come with the Bonnet machine, and they're used for removing the nipple. The other part that is in, still in the box is a foot, and this particular one is the claw foot that's used for doing chenille work and for uh, doing monogramming on towels and terry cloth and heavy materials. She also has a, what looks like a rubber washer in the toolbox. It is actually called the rubber shoe. It goes on the foot. The reason that it's called a shoe, a shoe is that when you put feet, you put shoes on feet. So, you can keep the needle nose pliers out because those we're going to be using right away. Now that was step one. We're going to step two. Now, turn your machine diagram laying on this table over so you can see what I'm talking about. Take the needle nose pliers and you see at the top of the column of parts is the needle bar. Ne Leah, can you point to the needle bar? Okay. Now right below the needle bar is a thumb screw sticking up. Can you find it, Leah? Okay. Hold the needle bar with your right with your left hand. Take the pliers with your right hand and un unloosen the thumb screw. You're going to have to keep your right and left hand out of the way. Don't undo it all the way. Just loosen it. Now take the needle bar and pull it straight up. It's out of the machine. Lay it down. Okay, that was uh, step two. Just hold on a minute. Now in the end of the needle bar is the needle. Can you move show the needle quite? Yeah, I've got it. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to have Leah do this here because the needle that's in my machine is in good condition. But for those of you at home, check the needle, see that the hook is not broken or the hook can even be bent. Take one of the needles out of your uh, package of new needles and compare it to see that the needle is in good condition. 
Now, if you find that the hook is broken or bent, we'll go on to step three. Leah, step three. If it is broken or bent, it has to be replaced. For general work using either 20-2 mercerized thread that's generally made by Robinson Anton, our C our SUS S U I S S E C mercerized thread, which you get from Troy, our six hundred denier rayon, you should be using a number five which would be a number 110 metric needle. If you look on the shank of the needle, you can see what size it is. Can you see the size marked on the side of the needle? You might need a magnifying glass in order to do that. Okay. To remove the needle, hold the needle bar with your left hand. Lay it. Take the pliers and unscrew the needle. Put the needle, put the pliers down on the shank just a little bit more and up further on the pliers. Hold the foot needle bar up here. Try to keep your left hand out of the way. Get a little bit more of the pliers on. Okay, you should remove the, and the needle is coming out of the needle bar. Okay, it takes a little bit of strength to hold it like this and turn the needle bar instead of the flares, and the needle will come out. Okay, the needle is out of the needle bar. Now, even though the needle bar has threaded holes in both ends, when you put in the new needle, be sure to replace it in the same end that it came out of. Most needle bars are slightly bent from tightening the thumb screw that holds it in the needle shaft against it. If you turn the needle bar around, this can cause the needle to rub against the nipple and break the thread. So now replace the needle back into the needle bar, Leah. Be sure to get it tight. Hold it with the pliers and tighten it with your hand. And get it as tight as you can get it. Be careful not to bend it. Is it tight? Yeah. Okay. Lay the needle bar down on your table and roll the needle bar. Watch the needle as it rolls and see if it's making an arch. It is. It is? Okay, you're going to have to straighten it. <coughs> this will be step number four. Roll the needle bar until you've got the arch to where it's facing up. Okay. Hold the needle bar in that position and move it over to the edge of the table to where the needle is off the edge. But be sure you keep the arch up. Now use your finger on your other hand and just bend down on the needle slightly. A little bit more. Okay, now roll the needle again to see if the arch is still there. No, I don't think it is. No, it's rolling good. You're looking at the hook. Your needle's straight. Uh, if your needle does still have an arch in it, as I told Leah, you've got to look at the shaft of the needle, not the hook, because that'll fool you. But if it does still have the arch, recheck it and keep doing what I as I showed you, until the arch is no longer there and the needle is perfectly straight coming out of the needle box. 
be sure you don't break the needle off in the uh, needle bar. When you're done, put the needle bar aside out of your way. Now we'll go on to step number five. <coughs> Next, step number five is how to remove the nipple and choose the right size. Look in the uh, box, Leah, and get the little wrench that I told you is called the nipple wrench. Now, do you know where the nipple is? At the bottom. Right. Okay, put the reach in the back of the machine with your other hand and put the foot down. Put, there's a lever back there that raises and lowers the foot. Okay, put the nipple wrench on the nipple and pull the work here. Now, put the nipple wrench in from here. Okay, now pull towards you. Turn it clockwise. Comes undone fairly easy, but you forgot a pull on it. Okay, keep uh, undoing it with your fingers until you get the needle, the nipple, all the way out. Okay, you got it in your hand? Uh huh. Okay, take a look at it and tell me what size it is. It's marked on the side of the nipple. It's fine. Okay, we're using the wrong size. So we'll have to get the number six nipple. You should always use the next larger size nipple than the needle you're using. And we're using a number five needle, so we'll have to switch to the number six nipple. Some instruction books will tell you to use the same size needle and nipple, but you'll find that you'll have fewer problems if you use a number six with a number five and so forth. Now, take the nipple in your hand again, Leah, and I think in that box you'll also find a straight pin. You got the straight pin? Okay. Put it down in the hole inside the nipple and see if there's any dirt in there. If it has, it'll just flip right out. Nipple's clean. Let me get you the nipple that you're going to be using. Okay, this will be step number six, cleaning the nipple. Leah, use the straight pin and see if there's any uh, lint or dirt in the nipple. You getting anything out of it? A little bit. Well, I usually keep my parts fairly clean, but yes. You have a nipple that's been on your machine for a week or so and you've been using it. It's going to have lint and dirt that's collected in it. And this has to be cleaned out. Always use a straight pen. Don't use your needle to do this because you'll damage the needle. When you're done, put the nipple aside, Leah. And give me the other one that was the wrong size. Here, give me the one that was the wrong size. Okay. Now we'll move on to step number seven. Okay, this will be step number seven, removing the foot and clamp. Leah, you'll reach to the back of the machine with your right hand. You normally do this with your left, but I'm going to have you do it with your right because of the camera. Lift the lever in the back there that raises the foot. Now do it with your right hand so that people can see it on the camera. Okay, that's the foot lifting one. Now the foot is up. Now feel the back of the foot and you'll feel a thumb screw back there. Now that thumb screw, turn it with the pliers to loosen it, turn it towards the clay. 
just about one turn so that the clamp will drop down and the foot will drop down. You have it? Mm -hmm. Okay, now push the clamp down and the foot will come away from the machine. Now take the clamp off and lay it aside out of our way. Now with your, that was the completion of step number seven. Now we're going to do step number eight, which is replacing the rubber shoe on the foot. You have two feet with your machine, one's the claw foot, which I already showed you. The other is called the rubber foot. Uh, Leah, take your fingers and take the rubber shoe off of the foot that you have. Do you have it? Uh huh. Okay. You're going to have to speak louder. I can't hear you. Okay. Uh, see if you can put it back on by just using your fingers. Yeah. You can, and uh -huh. it needs to be replaced. So put it aside and get the new one out of the box. And get the part that I told you was called the foot knife. Okay. Now turn, hold the foot upside down in your left hand. Upside down means that the ring part will be facing towards you. Lay the shoe on the foot and hold it so that it's in by in the groove of the foot with your thumb. Then start at your thumb and run the hook of the knife around the inside of the foot, inside the shoe, until it stretches onto the foot. Now I'm going to let you struggle with that because it's not easy to do, but you're going to have to learn how to do it. Okay. You got it? Yep. Great. Okay, later on I'm going to show you how to do this with the foot still on the machine. Go ahead and set the foot over with the clamp for now, Leia. That's the end of step number eight. Cut. Okay, this will be step number nine, removing the needle plate. We've got clay sitting on the floor now in order to show you this. So, Leia, reach under, your, under the machine with your right hand first. Directly below the needle plate, you'll feel a large round thumb screw. It's the only thing, it's the thing that's sticking down the further end, and it's about a half inch round in diameter. Have you found it? Yeah. Okay. Clay, can you zero in on it good so that they can see it as well as possible? Yeah, we got it pretty good. Okay, now Leah, you're going to have to use your left hand to loosen it. It should only be put in there hand tight. Don't ever use a pliers on it because that'll really make it difficult and the plate doesn't need to be that tight. So now undo the screw and whenever you have it completely undone so that it'll come out, let me know. Okay. Okay, now Clay, can you go to the top of the machine and show the needle plate? Put the screw back in, Leah. Don't take it out. Now push up on the screw. Did the plate raise up? Yeah. Okay, the plate raised up, and now you can remove it from the machine. So take the plate out of the machine, and to bring the screw back up, and put both of them aside out of the way. And we have all of the parts removed from the machine that need to be removed from regular maintenance. You have to do this generally on a weekly basis if you're using the machine eight hours a day. If you're using it less, you can clean the machine less. If you're using it more, you'll have to do it more often. This will be step number 10, how to clean the looper. First, Leah, reach under the machine with your left hand and pull the thread down out of the machine. When you're done, tell me. Okay. Okay, now reach to the back again and be sure that you've got the foot, left, foot lifting lever on the back down. Okay. Okay. Now take a paper towel 
Okay. So, yeah. Now fold it in half. Hold it in your left hand and hold it under the machine where you remove the plate screw from. Okay. Now take your oil can with your right hand and squirt some oil into the opening right directly under where all of the where the nipple and everything was. Right, here? right that's the looper. Okay. Squirt some oil in it. More. More. That's enough. Okay, now put your oil can down right there. Now with your right hand, reach over under the machine in front of where the wheel is. Now under the machine. Now over to your right a little bit more. You're looking for the switch that you turn the machine on and off with. There you are. Okay, now put the switch towards you. Okay, now. Press your foot and put your foot on the treadle. Okay. You don't have your foot on the treadle. Up a little bit further. Okay, now push down on it. Push down on the treadle with your right hand. Now with your right hand, put some more oil in. Keep the machine running while you do it. Try to go at steady speed. That's it. That's enough. Okay. Can you see the oil working? Keep going, ladies. If your machine hasn't been cleaned for a long time, you'll see all kinds of dirt and debris working its way to the top of the loop of the machine run. So go ahead and do this for at least a full minute whenever you clean. Now, Lisa, you can stop running the machine now. Take another paper towel in your left hand and wipe away. Put one in your right and one in your left and wipe away the oil from the bottom and the top. If the machine wasn't clean, you'd be getting all kinds of dirt out of the top and the bottom. You keep repeating this process and, and adding fresh oil until all you get on both towels is fresh, clean oil. When you're done, don't forget to turn off the power to the machine. Now, you got it all wiped away real good, Leah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, now this will be step number 11. We're going to clean the needle shaft. Uh, put a Another, put one of your pieces of paper towel over the area where the looper is. Now take the part, the thing that I told you was called the clean out rod. Right. Okay, now place the end of the clean out rod into the hole at the top of the machine where you remove the needle bar from. Okay? Now put it down in there, get a hold of the end of it, and work it up and down with your hand, and as you do, this way. So up and down with it, and turn it as you go in order to push any dirt and stuff out that may be in there. My machine has been cleaned recently, so there isn't anything in there. But if you have a machine that's been a long time since it was cleaned, you'll be amazed at the stuff that will come out of the needle shaft. When you're done, place one drop of oil, Leah, into the needle shaft. Just one drop, otherwise you'll have a mess. You won't believe it. Everything that we've done up to now should be done on a weekly basis if you're using the machine eight hours a day. Next will be step number 12, which is oiling the machine. Get into the habit of oiling the machine every time that you clean it. Place a drop into each of the oil holes that are marked on the machine. Leah, can you see the oil holes? I'll point them out to you and I'll 
do the oiling while you watch. One drop into the hole here, another one back here, one drop, and then there is a hole on the wheel that gets one drop. Could you show that again? Okay. There's one hole here, gets one or two drops of oil. The second hole is here, gets one or two drops, and then the hole on the wheel gets one or two drops. If you over oil the wheel, it may, as the wheel spins, it may throw oil. So be careful and don't. Okay, lay it at, on the wheel at the end of the machine is a belt. Okay, uh, put your thumb inside the belt towards the wheel. No. No. Here. You just this way. See? Can you see how I'm doing? You just flip it over into the smaller groove and off the wheel. Now, just take the machine and push back on it, and it'll go. Now, first you've got to turn the handle to the back. Reach underneath, turn the handle to the back so the wheel handles out of the way. Okay. Now push back on the machine, and it'll raise. Now, under the machine is places that also need to be oiled. On the handle, there's a screw in here. You just put one drop on each of the gears in each place that there's a moving part. You don't need to completely saturate it because if you do, it's just going to cause you problems. Just needs one drop about once a week, and that's great plenty. So that's all of the oiling that needs to be done under the machine. So keep the camera going because I want to talk a little bit more plain. Just keep it aimed over there. If you have a motor on the machine that requires oil, put several drops of oil into each cap on the motor. Many operators saturate the machine with oil and grease. This is not necessary. You give your machine a good cleaning once a year and put a light coating of grease or Vaseline on the gears, your machine will work fine. Uh, I may sound like a chauvinist female here, but most men seem to think that the machine should be floating in oil. Wait don't look at me like that quite. <laughs> They really don't need all of that much oil, and if you over oil them, you're going to have all kinds of problems with getting oil on the stuff that you're working on. So go easy with the oil. Put the machine back down into the table now. On the face of the machine, do you remember where the face is, Leah? Face? Uh huh. No, I it's the column of parts. Right there? Yeah. Let me point out a few things to you right now. All of the parts that are in here are called the face of the machine. The part that they are attached to is called the arm head. That's this part here. This is the front of the arm head. This part is the back of the arm head. This is the front side of the arm head, and back here is the back side of the arm head. This part here is also called the arm head. This is the wheel, this is the base, base, B-A-S-E, and the entire black part is called the casting. So if you remember that, you remember what the names of the parts are. The most important part on a Bonez machine is the handle which is underneath and the nose. That's this part right here. This is what makes the machine make the stitches and makes it go up and down and everything else in unison with the other parts. But as you go along you'll find out that this is the most important part to you remember. Take a good look at that and remember that's the nose. The nose is the first thing that goes anywhere. So if you follow the nose it'll lead you where you're going to go. Uh, 
on the side of the, uh, no, first we go to oil the parts on the face. So take the oil pan, lay it, okay. and start at the top, and every place that, turn the wheel first with your hand. Now see where the parts are moving? Uh -huh. See, this is moving up and down. You turn it more. See, this moved, this moved, this moved. Every place that something moves, put one drop of oil here, 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 one here, one here, 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 and raise it to where we can get in there. And we put one right on the part here. Now, work the machine up and down a little bit. Now, take your paper towel again. If I had another roll in here, I'd give you a new one, but I don't have one. Hold it against the part and turn the handle completely around okay. until you wipe all of the excess oil off the machine. If you don't do this, believe me, it's going to wait until you're working on the most expensive thing that you ever worked on in your life, and that's when it's going to spit all of this oil right back out at you. Okay, we've got the base of the machine. Uh, now, on the front of the machine, on the arm head, on the casting, Leah, mm -hmm. you'll find a big screw. This one? Right. Uh -huh. Okay, if any of you people out there don't already know this, you can eliminate the problem of searching for your sweater wire that's needed to thread the machine with by tying it to that screw with a heavy piece of twine about 12 inches long. That way it's always there where you can find it. Uh, undo the uh, screw. Turn it towards clay. When you do, the side arm cover will drop down, will fall into your hand. Okay, lay it down in front of you. Um, you look in there and you'll see more gears and stuff. And each of them needs one drop of oil, just only about once a month. And that's enough. So put the side arm head cover back on the machine, Leah. put the threader wire back over the top of the machine out of your way. Now we're going to go to step 13. In step 13, we're going to check the looper setting on your machine. And see that it's, uh, it's set right. We've got the machine all cleaned and oiled, so next we're going to check and see that everything is the way that it's supposed to be. Turn the handle aimed directly towards you, Leah. Now, is look where I showed you the, nip, the nose is. Uh -huh. Is the nose aimed towards you? Yes. You notice that the two work together. So whenever I tell you to move the handle and the nose towards you, they both move in unison. Now, with your right hand, turn the wheel, which is also called the drive pulley. Turn it away from you and watch the bottom of the nipple carrier. You remember where the nipple came out of? Uh-huh. Okay, watch it. We'll turn slowly until the nipple carrier raises as high as it will go, all the way to the top. When you get it to the top, stop. Is it there? Uh-huh. Okay, there's a little notch in the looper. Uh-huh. Where is that aimed at? Back that way. If it was a clock. What time would it be? One. That's exactly where it's supposed to be. The notch in the looper 
bar doing chain stitch embroidery should always be set at one o'clock. If it's not there, check it again, like I showed Leah. Do it one more time. Leah, turn the wheel until the nipple raises to the highest point, and the notch in the looper should be at one o'clock. Okay, now, if you find that you do what you were told, this will be step number 14. If you check the looper, and instead of being set at 1 o'clock, you find that the eye of the looper is set at 6 o'clock, you don't really have a problem. The machine is just set for doing chenille. Reach under the machine with your left hand, Leah, at the end of the shaft under there. We're going to do this by feel because you don't always turn the machine up in order to get at this. At the end of that shaft, right on where the looper is, do you feel a knob on the end? Yeah. Okay. You pull that, the looper operating gear. Pull it to hold the handle with your right hand. Now the handle. Handle's under the machine. Okay. Okay, hold the handle uh -huh. and pull the gear out to the left, to where it's placed. Okay. Okay, now turn it whichever way it will go until it drops into the notch at the other end. There's a slot in that gear. You're turning the handle instead of the gear. Is it working? No. Okay. With your left hand, hold the handle steady. With your right hand. Okay. Pull out on the end of the looper operating gear. The furthest thing on the end of the shaft down there. Okay, I can hear that you've got it out. Now it will turn one way or the other. It's not out, but it's moving. Okay, it will turn the machine up. Do it from the top of the machine. This is the looper operating gear here. You pull that out this way. Then while you hold the handle, you turn it. See, as I turn it, I'm trying to keep my fingers out of the way. It will turn around until the screw drops into the notch on the other end. Did you hear it click? Did you see it click? Could you see it, Clay? Yeah. Okay. Can now, do it again? Okay. Uh, now, now the machine, since it was set at one o'clock, by switching it to the other notch at the other end, it will be set at six o'clock. So it's now set for doing chenille. If we pull it out and turn it again, you don't have to turn the handle. Just turn the gear. When it drops in, you can see what it turned up that it drops into the other end. And now we're back on doing a uh, chain stitch again. Now let me find where I was. Now we're going to really get to you. Okay, this will be step number 15. And this step, I'll show you how to manually change the looper setting in case the looper is not set in the right place on your particular machine. The following instructions will apply to all Zonez machines, no matter how old, no matter what company they were made by or what model they are. The only exception to this is the Singer number 114K104 machine and the Carnelli 121. Later on, I'll give you the settings for these after the general instructions for all of the others. Leah, turn the handle to the back again. Turn the machine back on the hinges. No, handle to the back. Okay. Now turn the handle until you can see the little screw inside the looper operating here. 
you remember where the looper operating gear is? Right there. Right. Okay, turn the handle until you can see the screw. Okay. Okay, now just before you touch that screw, I'm going to warn you. Inside that looper operating gear is a collar that's held in with a spring. If you undo that screw too much, or if you take it completely out, the spring will fly out of there, and it's the real doozy to try to get back in. So when I tell you to undo it, just undo it less than a quarter of a turn so that it just barely loosens. Okay, go ahead and undo uh, just barely loosening. On the older machines, they don't have that collar. It's just the uh, gear itself. And the screw sticks out very prominent and easy for you to see. On all of the other newer machines, uh, the screw will be in a little notch at the end of the slight top slot on the gear. This type of looper operating gear was designed to make it easy to change from chain stitch to chenille. One end of the slot is for chain stitch and the other is for chenille. And if you'll notice, the way that the machine is set right now is the place that the screw is supposed to be when the machine is set for doing chain stitch embroidery. Before you, to those of you that have the old machines, before you start thinking that it would be a great idea to just change the looper operator operating gear on your old machine, forget it. I've tried it and it don't work. Now we've got the screw just barely loosened, so turn the machine back down into the table lid. Turn the handle down carefully and then put the machine down. Now we don't want that gear to come off the end. So everything that we do, you've got to be very, handle it very gingerly. Turn the handle and the nose carefully so they're aimed towards you again. Now turn the wheel with your right hand and watch the nipple carrier until it raises to the highest point. Be sure you get it there even if you have to do it a couple times to get it right. Let me know. Okay. Okay. With your left hand, very carefully, turn the looper operating gear until the eye of the looper is set at 1 o'clock. Be sure to keep the end of the gear flush with the end of the shaft. Hold the handle while you turn it so that, no, handle under the machine. Okay. Keep it straight. Is that at 1 o'clock? Yep. Okay. Now, very carefully, so nothing moves that ain't supposed to, turn the handle to the back again. Okay. Now turn the machine back on the hinges. Again, very carefully, turn the handle so you can see the set screw. Okay, hold the end of the gear. So nothing moves. Be sure it's flush with the end of the shaft. You understand what I mean there? No. Okay, the end of the shaft. This is the shaft. Goes through the gear. Here at the end, it shouldn't be sticking out. Okay. It should be right flush to where you just feel flat metal there. Okay. Go ahead and hold that and retighten the set screw. Okay. Did you get it as tight as you could get it? Yeah. Okay. Put the machine back and down on the table. Okay, now Clay, can you zero in on the looper? Okay, now Leah, hold the handle with your right hand. Okay. Pull the gear to your left. Turn it until it drops into the notch on the other end of the slot. You do it. You gotta pull it up to the left. Okay. Now drop into the notch. 
Yep. Turn the handle towards you and tell me where it's set. Six o'clock. That's where it should be. The machine's now on the chenille setting. If you did the job right, everything is the way that it's supposed to be. If it's not at six o'clock, go back over the steps and be sure that you get the machine to where it is at six o'clock at this point. Now, change the machine back to the chain stitch setting. Leia. Do you remember how to do that? Pull it out and then turn it back the other way. That's right. Okay. Okay, we've learned to do a major repair on the machine. Now, uh, see if you can figure out how to put the belt back onto the wheel. Can you see what she's doing, Clay? No, not really. She doesn't see the belt, though. Yeah. Okay. Okay, you've got it on the first screw. Now you've got to put it up onto the next one beside it. It's too loose. You do that by holding it with your thumb okay. and turning the wheel with your other hand. You do it best with your left hand. Turn the wheel as you flip it into that notch on the wheel. The machine's now ready to work again. Uh, if you have a Singer 114K104 machine, the chain stitch shed setting should be set to 11 o'clock instead of 1 o'clock. But the gear on those machines is made to where the chenille setting will still be at 6 o'clock. So remember, if you have a 114K104, they're supposed to be set at 11 o'clock, not at 1 o'clock. On the Carnelli 121 machines, even though this is a Bonaire machine, it don't have a looper. It has a bobbin and it makes a lock stitch. So you don't need to worry about them. The looper setting should be checked each time that you clean your machine. Any time that you break a needle, the looper can be thrown out of alignment. So now we're ready to put the machine back together. Okay, this will be step number 16. Put the needle plate back into the machine where you got it from. Don't worry about uh, the hole just yet. Now replace the large thumb screw back into the bottom of the needle plate, but don't tighten it all the way. Just put it in there and so that it holds onto the plate. Okay. Okay. Now this will be step number 17. We're going to put the foot back on the machine. When you put the foot back, first put the clamp onto the foot with the thumb screw to the back of the foot. Okay. okay, move it into place What's this in? where you removed it from. Put the uh, lifting lever up. Okay. Okay, now move the clamp as high as it will go and hold it there and hold the foot up as high as it will go into the notch there. Okay. Now tighten the thumb screw. Now tighten it a little bit more with the pliers to make sure it's tight. If the clamp is not placed as high as it will go, eventually this will cause the nose wires on the machine to wear off, and the machine will start making a sharp stitch in one direction and a long stitch in the other. My fingers fell off. Put it back. back with Uh-huh. Okay, let me know when you've got the foot back where it was. Be sure to get the clamps up all the way and get the foot up all the way. Okay. Okay, tighten it with your fingers first. And then be sure to tighten the thumb screw slightly with the pliers. 
If you don't, it'll work loose while you're working and the machine's running, and the needle and nipple can tear holes in whatever you're working on. So always be sure to tighten that just a little bit with the pliers. Okay. If you over tighten it, you can break the thumb screw, so be careful on that too. Now, step 18. You're going to love this, Lisa, Leah, <laughs> because this is replacing the rubber shoe while the foot's on the machine. Yeah. But with your finger, push down on the rubber shoe. Okay. The shoe fall off? Yep. Okay, this happens from time to time when you're putting material under the foot. It can be replaced without removing the foot. Hold the edge, put the shoe back under the foot, approximately where it's supposed to go. Now reach under it with your right hand and with your index finger hold it up at the back. Okay. You're probably not going to be able to see this place. Take the rubber knife and put the hook of the knife down between the you the knife in your uh, right hand. Hold the foot with your left hand. Put the knife down between the foot and the shoe and start at the back where you're holding it with your finger. No, from the top. Put the knife in like this. And hold it from the back and work it around until it goes on. I'm going to let you do it because they're going to have to do it themselves too. I'm not going to show you that again because I was lucky to manage it the first time. <laughs> you might have to struggle with it, but it can be done. Uh, some operators glue the shoe to the foot. This isn't necessary. If you're working on bulky material and the bolt knocks the shoe off while you're working, or putting the material under. Either the shoe is worn out or maybe you could just change to the cloth foot. Next is step number 19, Leah. We're going to replace the nipple. So use the nipple wrench. Here, you got the wrong nipple. Put the nipple back in the, turn it up to where it's wheels, where it's all the nipple carrier is all the way up. You see? And put nipple in with your fingers. Screw it in as far as you can with just your fingers. You sometimes have to use the index finger on both hands to do it. You got it in? Yep. Okay, now tighten it just a little bit more with the nipple wrench. Okay, this will be step number 20, replacing the needle bar and the needle. First, please just make sure that the nose and the handle are aimed toward you. Okay. Okay, make sure the op uh, look at the opening in the hook and the needle. Okay. Hold it so it's aimed towards you also. All right. Okay, now be careful to keep the opening aimed towards you and lower the needle bar into the needle shaft until you can just see the hook below the nipple. 
Okay, now reach with your left hand and tighten uh, the set screw. Okay. Okay, we're going to have to readjust the height of the needle later on. When we do, then we'll tighten the thumb screw tight slightly with the pliers. If you don't do that, I tighten, you know, if you don't tighten it with the pliers when you're working, that will work loose and you can end up breaking either the thumb screw or the needle can fall down into the looper and end up breaking. I've had to take the machines completely apart because operators working for me forgot to tighten it and it went down in and the needle bent and broke in the needle shaft. So be sure to tighten it just slightly with the pliers. Be careful that you don't over tighten it because then you've got a problem with getting the uh, screw out of there if you break it. Okay, so now we're going to step number 21, which will be choosing the hole in the needle plate and lining it up. Okay, there are 12 sides of needles, 12 sides of nipples, and would you count and tell me how many holes there are in the needle plate? There's two in each section. Just count each section. There's 12 sides. Right. So that would tell you that if there's 12 sides of needles and 12 sides of nipples and 12 sides of holes, that there must be some relation, huh? Yeah. Okay, you're right. The size of the needle and the plate hole, you always use the next larger size nipple. But the needle and the plate hole should be the same size. If you're using in the transcript, there's a list that tells you if you're using a certain thread, you should, it tells you the needle that you're supposed to use with it and the nipple that you're supposed to use with it and the plate hole. When using thinner thread, use the smaller sizes. When using heavier thread, use the larger sizes. All the threads that I've mentioned above that are listed in the transcript are available from Tri Thread Company. We're using the number five needle and the six nipples for this. So what size uh, needle hole in the plate should we use, Leah? Um. Same size as the nipple? No, same size as the needle. Okay, yeah. So that would be what? Oh, um, five. Right. Okay, now find the smallest hole. The inside hole is the needle hole. That's the one that's directly below the needle. Okay. The outside hole is the hole that you put the threader wire through in order to thread the machine. So find the smallest needle hole. Okay. Count off to where you find the fifth hole. And use the uh, foot knife in one of the holes in order to move the plate to where it's direct. The number five hole is directly under the needle. Let me know when you've got it there. It won't turn. Loosen your screw underneath just a little bit. Okay. Okay. You got it right straight under there? Yeah. Okay, now turn the wheel. If you don't have it under there, you're going to break the needle now. I want to warn you. Okay. Turn the wheel until the needle is just entering the hole. Okay, now look, watch the needle and turn the handle all the way around several times real slow. You're looking to see that the needle has clearance all the way around. Okay. You're sure that it does? Yeah. Because if it don't, you're going to break the needle and you're going to break the thread. When you're sure that the needle will not hit against the plate at any point, hold the plate firmly with your right hand 
and retighten the large thumb screw under the plate. You don't ever use pliers on this. Okay. Okay, sometimes there are exceptions to all of the rules. If you have an old machine and the plate is old and chewed up, you may have to use whatever hole is in good condition. Sometimes you'll need to use a larger plate hole than called for because the needle is breaking the thread. After you've been operating the machine for a while, you'll develop your own preference. When doing chenille with Orman yarn, you may need to use a larger plate hole to match the nipple size instead of the needle size. The main cause for breaking needles is either using too large a needle plate hole or using one too small. Now we're going on to the next step, which will be step 22, but I've got a few things I want to tell you first. After you've learned to operate the machine, you'll find that the way your machine is adjusted will not work perfectly for all materials. If you're working on block lettering and you cannot get square corners, it's probably the machine is not adjusted right. Other mechanics will tell you that it's the operator. That's because they don't know how to operate the machine, so they do adjustments by guesswork. If the machine is adjusted properly, you should not have any problem getting square corners on block lettering, and you shouldn't have any problem staying on the stamping line. So this next part is very, very important. This is step 22. Now on the part that I've been calling the nose, lay up, uh -huh. you'll turn the handle around to where it's facing away from you. You'll see that part that the nose is in is called the bead lover bracket. Okay. The back of that is a set screw. Can you see the screw? Yes. No. You know where the nose is. Right. Okay, now directly behind the nose. Should be facing towards you, Leah. Yes. No. Right oh, here. Okay. This little screw right here. Okay. Take your little screwdriver and just loosen the screw less than a quarter of a turn. There, that's enough. Now with your left hand, raise the feed lever bracket. The feed lever bracket is here. Right here. It should raise up and down. You didn't loosen it enough. So loosen it just a little bit more. Did you loosen it more? Uh -huh. Now see if you can raise it up and down. Okay. Now. Raise the feed lever bracket as high as it will go and then push it down as low as it'll go. Okay. Uh, you notice that it moved a total span of about less than a half inch. Okay. If the bracket won't move, some mechanic that didn't know what he was doing has taken the machine apart and tightened the tiny screw behind the nose too tightly. This tiny screw is only supposed to keep the bracket from going above or below a groove that's in the needle shaft. Don't attempt to get at this tiny screw without instructions. Complete instructions for doing this are in Artistic Touch video number five, the mechanics tape. The screw I'm talking about is on the feed lever bracket in the space just behind the nose, not the screw that I just had you loosen on the back of the feed lever bracket. Now, do you understand that? Maybe. Let's go over it again. In behind, if your nose won't move up and down like this one did, in behind the nose, in between these two pieces, uh -huh. is another little tiny screw. Okay. 
If that tightens you tightly, then the nose cannot be adjusted. It has to be taken apart, and that screw is only supposed to hold the nose in place in a little groove. So the nose will move up. The seed lever bracket will move up and down, like we did. Don't try to get at it yourself, because it's a major repair. The only way that you should do it is with complete instructions. Now, after you've figured out where the top of the groove is and the bottom of the groove is, place the bracket halfway between the two. Can you get that figured out? Okay. When you've got it to where you're sure that you're halfway between the top stroke and the bottom stroke, retighten the set screw on the back. This is the setting that the feed lever bracket and nose should be at for average material while you're using a backing material. If you're working on heavier material, you may need to raise the nose. When working on thinner material without backing, you may need to lower the nose or the needle will pick the material. Improper setting of this part is the number one reason for Bonnet's machine picking the material when working on nylon jacket. Now we'll move on to step number 23. Step number 23 is adjusting the nipple. Now on the front of the arm head, do you remember where the arm head is, Lee? Right here. Okay. At on the front, at the top, there's a big screw. Yeah. You see it? That's Put your hand on it. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Put your hand on the top of it. Okay. okay. That's the nipple carrier pressure regulating thumb screw. Be careful when you remove it. I'm going to have you take it out of there. Be careful because it has a spring under it and it'll jump clear out of there right at you. Start undoing it. You can't get it undone because I tightened it with fire. It has, a, has the screw and the collar. The collar should be the only thing that's ever tightened with pliers. Loosen the collar to where it'll come off. So now just screw it out. Watch out, it's about to jump at you. Okay? Okay. Now, take the screw, take the nut on the scrum, thumb screw. <coughs> take it off? No, don't take it off. Just position it to where it's halfway on the thread. To what? Okay. Oh, okay. Take the thumb screw that you just took out and look at it. Okay. Now, the thumb screw. Okay. Okay. Now position the collar that's on there to where it's about halfway on the thread. So that you've got about the same distance above the collar and below the collar. Okay. Okay, now put it back into the machine. You'll have to push down in order to get it in there. Screw the thumb screw down to the nut. Okay, now tighten the nut with the wire. Now with your, turn the handle towards you again, with your right hand, turn the wheel away from you while watching the nipple raise to the highest point. Okay, okay now Clay, we're going to have to cut right here. Okay, this is still step number 22. We've got Clay playing contortionist in behind the machine, putting on the floor. Uh, with your right hand, lay it, or reach over the machine with the small screwdriver with your right hand. And on the back side of the arm head, the back side, okay, you okay. got it. 
you find two holes, one at the top of the side of the arm head and then one about halfway down. Okay. Insert your small screwdriver into the hole in the center. Okay. Okay, now find the notch in the little set screw in there and just barely loosen it. Let me know when you've done it. Just turn to where it's barely loosened. Okay. Okay, now just to the right of that, on the back of the arm head, you'll find what is called the nipple bear carrier bell crank. Okay. It's held onto the machine with a hand stud that looks like a large screw. Can you reach back there and feel it? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Can you you can look through the opening in the machine and see the screw. Right. Okay, now reach over it and put your big screwdriver into the slot in that screw. Okay. Now this isn't easy to do. Turn the screw and watch the nipple as it raises or lowers. Don't worry about turning it too far because it will only go so far down and then it will raise again. Now get acquainted with the full stroke of this adjustment. Turn the screw so you can see how high it will go and how low it will go. Okay. Can you see any difference? Can you see what's happening? Not really. Is the nipple raised or down? Okay. You should be able to see the nipple raise as you turn the screw. You don't have the set screw loosened enough. Oh, okay. Or at all. Yeah, you turn it the wrong way. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. So you put the screw into the slot. You turn the screw until you can see the nipple raise as high as it will go. Okay. And then it will lower all the way. It's less than an eighth of an inch that it will go. Okay. But now, for ordinary work, you put it halfway between the two. Okay. Then retighten the set screw. The machine, the nipple should be set at the right setting for doing everyday normal work that you would do on the machine. If you're working on heavier material, like doing quilting or something like that, or heavy jackets, or doing chenille work, you may need to set the nipple higher. If you're working on real thin material, and especially if you're not using any backing material, you'll need to lower the nipple. This the adjustment that will make a really great operator out of you, so learn it well. If this adjustment is done right, you won't have any problem making square corners on block lettering after you've learned how to operate the machine. And believe me, that is the thing that really drives operators crazy, is trying to get those corners square. And I have sat and watched other operators in factories and just wish that I could go over and adjust their machine for them because they were struggling and there was really no reason for it. For safety, check the setting. Place two pieces of paper, typing paper, under the nipple and turn the wheel by hand. Here, Leah, do this. Turn, after you've got it under there, put the foot back down. Now turn the wheel by hand until it makes several stitches. If the nipple's making a mark on the paper other than the mark that the needle's making, you'll need to raise the nipple. If it's set too low, the nipple can cut holes in the material. If it's set too high, the needle will snag the material and it will have to be lowered. 
So what's happening, Leah? Is it making any mark? It's been holding the paper like it's supposed to. Okay, but it's not making a little ring around the hole. Mm. The foot ring is. Yeah. Look, take the, raise the needle all the way up and raise the foot. Take it out and take a look at your paper. All you should have is the needle hole. You shouldn't have a mark made by the nipple. Okay. Okay. After you have the nipple set correctly, you can put more pressure on the nipple by screwing the nipple carrier thumb screw. That's the one at the top of the arm hip that we adjusted. Remember? This one? Yeah. You can put more pressure on the nipple by screwing that in more. Or if you need less pressure, you can screw the thumb screw out more. Whenever you adjust the nipple carrier thumb screw. Always be sure to tighten the nut with pliers or it'll work loose while you're working and whenever they come loose the spring sends them fly into the ceiling. So that is the end of step 23. Okay. I don't know how we skipped 23 somewhere but uh, we did. The next step that we're going to is step 24. I hope you don't get all mixed up on this because I'm not going to redo this section of the tape. Cut point. For step 24, we're going to adjust the foot and it's done just about the same way that we adjusted the nipple. Adjusting the nipple was step 23 and I for forgot to mark it somehow or other. But it'll be on the transcript script to remind you of that. Okay, Lisa, on the back of the arm head, right, that's called the, that screw back there is called the presser foot slide bar thumb screw. It also has a spring under it, but it won't jump out at you. Remove the screw. Right? Now you're tightening it. That's loosening it. No, it won't jump out. Okay. Most of the time I don't even use the collar on that particular thumb screw. Okay. Now, do the same thing with this as I had you do on the other one. Put the thread halfway between, I mean, put the nuts so that they're halfway between the thread and put it back into the machine. Screw it down to the nut. You do have to push down on it. Get it in there. You're going the wrong way, aren't you? No, no. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Screw it down to the nut and then tighten it with the pliers. If you don't have a screw on the nut on that screw, you don't need to worry about it because it's not really necessary. Uh, that one won't fly out and it won't give you any problems and it won't move. But the front one, the nut has got to be there. Okay, Leah, on the front side of the arm head, you'll find another hole. You see it? Yeah. Okay, inside there is another little set screw. Just okay. barely loosen it. Leah, when you got it loosened. Okay. Okay, now just to the right of the set screw on the back of the arm head, you'll find what's called the feed bell crank. Uh -huh. It's held onto the machine with another hand stud. Okay. And the end of the hand stud is a slot, you found it. Put the screwdriver in and put the lifter, now turn the wheel until the nipple is down and the foot up. Okay, now turn the screwdriver in the slot and watch the foot raise and lower. Go slow. Go real slow so you can see the foot raise and lower. When you get acquainted with the stroke on this, 
same as you did with the nipple hinge stick. Can you see what it's doing? Uh-huh. Is it raising and lowering? Yeah. Okay, now get it halfway between the highest and the lowest. Okay. Okay, now retighten your set of screw in the front of the arm. For working on average material, when you place a single piece of paper, typing paper, under the foot, now, just one piece. You've got two. Okay. You should just barely be able to pull the paper away when the foot is at the lowest stroke. See if you can pull the paper. Get the foot to the lowest stroke again. Okay, okay. leave it there. Now see if you can pull the paper. Now you've got the nipple down. The nipple has to be up and the foot is the lowest stroke. You should just be able to pull the paper like that. Okay. See? Could you see that good yeah. point? Okay. When working on heavier materials, you may have to raise the foot in order to give more space. On quilting, generally, the foot needs to be raised to the higher, highest point. For thinner materials, you may have to lower the foot. But whenever you're doing either one of these settings, be careful that you get them right because the nipple being too low can damage the material and if the foot is set too low, it can actually damage the machine. It can cause the foot to start bending. You can get more pressure on the foot by screwing the presser foot thumb screw in more, point to the presser foot thumb screw. Now that's the big one at the top of the armpit. Oh. Now that's the nipple. Wait. Right. Yeah, right. Okay, now you, you were right, I was wrong. The thumb screw to the back. No, the thumb screw, right. Okay, you can get more pressure by screwing it in and less pressure by turning it out. Later, when you've learned how to handle the machine, if you can, can't stay on the stamping lines or make square corners, redo these adjustments until you can because it's not the operator, it is the machine. If the machine is adjusted right, you won't have any problem. Don't forget now, the major adjustment for the nipple is on the back of the arm head. Point back there to where we adjusted that, okay? And the pressure regulator is on the front. And the major adjustment for the foot is on the front of the arm head, right? and the pressure regulator on the back. Read that over and over several times in the transcript so that you don't forget it. Another special note, some of the older Singer machines don't have these adjustments. I mean, the one with the set screw to where you turn the screw and you raise and lower the foot. The cans are hand studs are actual screws instead of studs. These machines can be modernized if you happen to have one. If you do, the hole where the set screw is won't be on the front side of the arm head and the holes for the set screws won't be on the back side of the arm head. But as I said, these can be modernized so that you do have those adjustments. So if you'll get in touch with me, I'll let you know how to change them and modernize them. On the really old machines, they don't have these adjustments at all. They have what's called scissor loop springs. These are exposed on the arm of the machine. They can be adjusted. If you'll let me know what kind of machine you have, I'll let you know how to do it. There's another special note. Some of you have machines with what is called a stop motion. 
My friends at the car alley company in France don't agree with me, but I think it's easier for you to learn to operate the machine without the knowledge. If you have a machine that will not settle by you just pressing on the foot treadle, the stop motion is probably on the machine. Leah, do you remember where the power switch is for the machine? Like okay, turn it on. Now, put your hand on the handle and turn it towards you. Okay. Put your foot on the treadle. Press down on the treadle. Okay, this machine doesn't have it, and all you need to do in order to get this machine to move and so just press on the treadle. Turn the power off there. If your machine won't work by just doing that, try pulling down on the handle and then press on the foot treadle. If the machine sews now, your machine has what is called a stop motion. Unless you remove it or disengage it, you'll have to pull down on the handle as you press on the treadle to make the machine work. When you release the handle, the machine will stop sewing even when you are still pressing on the treadle. Some operators like the stop motion and use it all the time. I personally don't like it and I feel that the machine is adjusted properly. You can do beautiful work without it. If you want to leave it on the machine, that's fine to me. If you want to disengage it, there's instructions in the transcript of tape that tell you exactly how to do it. Okay, we've learned about most of the adjustments, and now we're ready to start doing some practice. At first, we've got a couple other light adjustments that we need to do. Leah, this will be step number 25. going to adjust the length of the stitch. For practice, I'm going to have you set your machine to a real small length stitch length okay. on the top, front top of the arm head. Mm -hmm. You find a screw with a lever attached to it. Okay, that's it. Loosen the lever by pulling it towards you. what I'm talking about, try pushing it away from you. Okay. That works, works better, huh? Yeah, it is. Okay, I'll have to change that. <laughs> You've already got your two pieces of paper, typing paper, under the foot. You've got the foot down. Now sew a few inches, turn the machine on, and sew a few inches towards you. I've got to tighten the belt on my machine. When you hear that noise, that means that the belt is too loose. You've only got one sheet of tight to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cut. Okay, Clay pointed out to me that Leah only had one piece of paper under the machine, so we stopped and she put two. Uh, you're probably in the same position, so stop and put two pieces of paper under the foot. Turn the machine on. Get the foot down, right. step on the treadle, and step on the handle. Okay. okay. Now you should notice that the machine will sew in whatever direction you aim the handle. Oops. Oops. Hold on, yeah, I'm going off the paper. first starting, watch the nose of the machine, because whatever direction the nose is aimed in, that's the same direction that the handle is aimed in, and that's the direction the machine will sew. So go ahead, Leah, and play with the machine for just a little bit. Do this 
play this is pretty fun. <laughs> I'll get my turn. Okay, now we're going to make it a little easier. Just remember, it's like that. Let's go back up to the top of the machine where we loosen that lever before, remember? Uh huh. Okay, take your screwdriver and screw the screw in there down to where there's only about three threads of the screw showing. Right, okay, right. Now tighten the lever down again. The lever, this? Uh huh. Pull it towards you and then get it from the back with the screwdriver to tighten it so that it won't come undone. That's good. Now this will be step number 26. Turn the machine, turn the power on again, Leah. Okay. Step number 26 is threading the machine. Raise the foot, be sure the nipple and needle are up. Okay. Turn the handle while looking, no, the handle, here's it, the wheel. Turn the handle while looking into the hole just in front of the needle plate. Okay. Just in front of the needle ball. Watch for the eye of the looper to come into view. When you say it, look, be known. Let the eye of the, okay. You see it? Yeah. Okay, you're going to put the threader wire down into that hole. Not yet, not yet. Okay. When you do, be sure the eye of the looper is away from the hole. If you force the threader wire down into the eye of the looper, you may not get it back. That would mean you would have to figure out how to get it out of there, and in doing so, you could damage the looper, so it would have to be replaced. So, whenever you thread the machine, be very careful. Now, we're not ready to thread it just yet. Uh, lay it down under the machine. Uh -huh. You see a cone of thread is sitting down there. Yeah. Clay, we're going to have to break for a minute. Best place to set your thread, if you're working with cones, is on the floor under the machine, just to the right of where you're sitting. Right now, I've got Clay and Leah both sitting on the floor to show you this. By having the cone that there to your right side, it'll make it easier for you to get at the cone of thread when you need to change color. And then on as embroidery work, you need to change colors quite often. You'll also have less problems with the thread hanging up and breaking if it has a longer distance to travel before it enters the loop. So, there are three eye hooks under the machine. The first one should be directly above the cone of thread, and the thread should run through it. The second eye hook should be directly behind the first one at the back of the underside of the table. Run the thread through this one also. The third eye hook should be on the back underside of the table, directly behind where the thread tension disc comes. An alternate placement would be that the first two eye hooks can be placed under the table at the far left corner. The third eye hook has got to be directly behind the tension. Put your right hand, Leah, feel to the right of the tension assembly, and you'll feel a lever. Okay. You got that? This? Right. When you're working with spools of thread, this is how the tension is regulated. The spool is put on a rod that would be attached to the tension assembly, and then there's a lever of tension regulating the bracket that comes down against the spool. That tension part is regulated by moving the lever that Leah showed you either to the back to loosen the uh, tension or to the front to tighten it. 
since we're working with cone to thread, this lever should be pushed all the way to the back. That way the tension regulating plate will go to the back and raise. Move it all the way to the back, Leah. Okay. I don't think you're doing the right thing. The tension regulator is here. With that pushed all the way to the back, it disengages the action of, well, this one isn't set exactly right, but on most machines, it will disengage the action here. It's to the front, disengages it to the back, makes the tension on it tighter. That should not hit against the tension if your tension is in front of it. I have the tension on my machine behind it so there won't be any problem. Now Leah pulled the thread out of the tension. No, the other way. You're going to have to do this yourself. Pull it all the way out of the tension. Okay. Now first from the eyelet in the back, it goes into the little hole in the piece that hangs down behind the tension. This one? Nope. Now, back here. See, there's a little hole there. Right. Now, when you get it through there, let me know. Okay. Okay. Now, from there, the thread goes up over the top and down between the tension desk. Okay, right here. Now you have to do it with your with both hands. That round just came back. Yeah. See the two plates there? Those are yeah. called the tension discs. It has to go over the top of them and down between the two. Into the space between them. Got it? Yeah. Okay, from the tension disc, you pull the thread down and into the lower part of the oval on the thread controller spring, right directly below the looper. This? Right. Now you put it in, no, you're working too hard. Just pull the thread tight, Leah. Pull the thread tight, now flip the side of the thread in, now under, under this to the right of the oval. Right here? No. Right here. The end of here. And it'll just go up in there and now it's in. Okay. Did you see that? Could you see that, Mike? Go up in here. Okay. It comes just to the side. And then whenever you pull the thread tight, it will slip into the oval. And it's there. Now we'll let everybody get up off the floor. Cut. Okay, Leah, make sure that the eye of the looper is out of the way. Turn the handle again and make, no, the handle. Not the wheel, the handle. Look down into the hole where you're going to put the threader wire, the one in front of the needle hole. Uh -huh. Make sure that you, the eye of the needle, the eye of the looper is out of the way. Okay. Okay, now take the threader wire and put the threader wire down into the hole, the one in front of the needle hole. Push it down as far as it will go. Okay. Now reach underneath, under the machine with your left hand and get the thread. Be sure that you're this side of the thread controller spring. On what side? Be sure that you get the thread from this side of the thread controller spring that's under the machine. Okay. Now hook the thread. There's a little notch on the end of the... Uh, they're going to do the same thing. So show them, show them her being a contortionist. I'm going to go in. I can't get it. Huh? I can't get it. You can't get what? I can't get that to go down. 
Yep. Okay, it should be sticking out the bottom now. Okay. Now, what are you doing down there? Okay, you've got your thread. And on the end of the hook, the end of the threader wire, is a little hook. Uh -huh. Hook the thread onto it. But be sure that you're on this side of the thread controller spring down there. Let me know when you've got it hooked on there. Okay. Now pull the, hold the thread with your left hand and pull the threader wire up to the top. The thread will come with it. Okay, do it again. Put the foot down. 
Okay? Now turn on the power to the machine. Now step on the treadle and sew for two or three inches towards you. Okay, if the needle tape is set right, the chain on the machine should be making a stitch to where the chains are about the half the size of the zeros of the lowercase alphabet of a typewriter. How do they look? They look that small. Okay. If the chain is pulling too much thread up to the top of the material, you would need to lower the needle just slightly. If the chains are not little circles, then you would need to raise the needle slightly. If the stitch is too tight. If there was too, way too much thread, either the tension needs to be tightened more or the needle needs to be lowered more. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. You should. Do you want me to go over it? I think I got it. Okay, if the tension looks too tight, right. then you would raise the needle first. Right. If it's still too tight, then you would loosen the tension. Okay. If the stitch is too loose and too much thread on top of the, machine, uh, the paper, you would lower the needle first. If it still wasn't the way you wanted it, then you would tighten the tension underneath. Understand? Okay. You should have a very small, sharp stitch on the machine right now. Okay. I've done an example in the transcript for you to compare your stitch to. You'll find while learning, it'll be much easier for you to get control of the machine while using this real sharp, small stitch. As I said, an example of this stitch will be in the transcript for you to see. Later on, after you have gotten to where you're able to control the machine, you can gradually increase the length of the stitch until it is the size of the example also shown in the transcript that is used for average work. This, is, this stitch is about the size that you should use for writing names and doing block lettering and script lettering. Now we're going to go to step number 28. As I told you at the beginning of this video, you are a part of the machine when you're operating it. This will be step number 28, and I'll show you how to align yourself with the machine. You must be sitting so that your right arm is in a straight line from your elbow to the handle. If Leave, I think you might have to move your chair a little bit. If you're not lined up right, your hand should be coming off the handle to where it's coming in a straight line back to your elbow and shoulder. Is it? Yes. Okay. You feel comfortable? Yes. Okay. If your chair is too high, you'll have to saw the legs off. Clay, can you show them the height of the chair that uh, Lee is sitting on? It's much lower than a regular chair, probably about two to three inches lower. If you try to sit on a high chair while operating these machines, you'll end up with all kinds of medical problems. I've known people that have had to resort to surgery from trying to sit too high and bending over, working eight hours a day on these machines. So be sure that every time you sit down with the machine, you line yourself up right and that you're sitting to where you're perfectly comfortable. We're ready to go to step number 29. Step number 29 is starting to practice and trying to stay on the paper. Leah has already placed two pieces of typing paper under the foot. She's put the foot down with the foot lever in the back of the machine. Now, put your left hand over to the side out the way, Leah, or put it in your lap or any place that you want to put it, but just don't put it on that paper. Okay. Power switch is on, 
and you're ready to start sewing. I am. So press down on the treadle and let's see what you do. So slow. Just try to stay on the paper. Try to get control of the thread and just manage to stay on the paper. 